Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so in the last video, I mentioned that before we get into actually um, writing any code and doing these projects we talked about, we're first going to um, cover uh, all of the relevant necessary biology. But um, I'm actually going to start with something possibly kind of unusual, um, which is that before we get into like the fundamental, um, really important biology that I was talking about before, um, we're going to have like a quick review of high school biology and this video is actually going to be optional. So if you guys don't feel like watching this video, um, you, you can just skip it. You can just skip to the next video and you should be okay uh, for this course and for the projects we're going to be doing. Um, I'm including this video because in a way it felt like um, I shouldn't just like skip over this stuff. I should at least mention it. But to be honest, it isn't really that important for, um, for the purposes of this course. And um, in a lot of ways, it isn't even that important for um, bioinformatics like as a field in general, unless you happen to be like specializing on, on something that, that kind of requires it. Um, but yeah, like when I was in high school, um, I remember taking AP Bio and um, really not enjoying it because like so much of it was just like memorizing the steps of things, like memorizing like all the steps of the Krebs cycle or memorizing all the steps of like mitosis or meiosis or something like that. Um, and I had, I had the idea after that that I didn't like biology because I didn't like just um, memorizing things. Um, and I didn't realize until later that, that bioinformatics isn't really about like memorizing all the steps of the Krebs cycle or something like that. It's more about um, like, like looking for interesting patterns in um, data. So, so to me, that at least is a lot more interesting. And yeah, it's pretty different from, from like my high school biology class. Um, so yeah, just, just to repeat, like this video is optional. If you guys want to skip it, you can skip it and just move to the next video. But yeah, this will be like a quick review of, of some things uh, from like high school bi biology. Um, okay, so just to start with, um, cells are the smallest unit of life that can function independently. And they perform um, the key functions of life, including growth, metabolism, and reproduction. And um, they, they can be single-celled organisms like bacteria, or they can also be the building blocks of um, larger multicellular organisms like humans. And this over here is a picture of a um, E. coli cell dividing. Um, so one of the things you guys might remember from high school is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So um, like one of the key things is that eukaryotic cells like this one on the right, um, have membrane bound organelles and that includes um, the, the nucleus. So the nucleus is where the DNA is contained in um, eukaryotic cells um, and it's, it's bound by its own um, membrane. And prokaryotic cells are generally simpler and they don't have um, membrane bound organelles including the nucleus. So the, the DNA is um, like, like they still have DNA but in prokaryotic cells it's just kind of like free floating in the cell. And sometimes it's, um, it's like a ring of uh, DNA, like a circular ring like this. And yeah, just have another slide here on um, prokaryotes. So in general, um, they're single celled. Uh, they have a, a simple structure, again, no nucleus. Um, they're usually smaller than eukaryotes. And some examples um, are bacteria and archaea. And something uh, kind of cool and interesting is that because they're because they're single celled, they often have like external features uh, like f flagella and pili, um, like these things here on the outside of them that allow them to like navigate around and like move around their um, environment. So I um, always thought that was kind of cool. And so um, eukaryotes, on the other hand, are um, more complex. They have membrane-bound organelles, including the nucleus. And um, over on the right here, this is a uh, little picture of like a bunch of the um, different types of organelles they have. Um, yeah, you can see they're, they, they look a lot more complex than the um, prokaryotic cells. And they can be single-celled, like protists or yeast. Uh, but they can also be part of um, larger multicellular organisms like humans. And yes, yeah, so like we've been talking about, um, one, one of these organelles is the nucleus. 
Um, it's the control center of the cell. It contains the DNA um, organized into chromosomes. And it also contains um, the nucleolus, which is where ribosomal RNA um, and, and proteins are combined to form ribosomal subunits. And yeah, so we've got, got a picture over here. Um, you guys might remember, hopefully from the previous video, these terms um, transcription and translation. If you guys if you guys forgot, don't worry, because we'll talk more about them um, pretty soon. But yeah, they're, they're labeled here um, in this picture. So transcription, again, is where um, the mRNA is created from the, um, from the DNA that happens inside of the uh, nucleus, at least in eukaryotes. And then translation, um, stringing together the uh, protein out of amino acids um, using the information in the messenger RNA. Um, again, if, that, if any of that is confusing to you guys, don't worry because we'll, um, we'll cover it in more detail pretty soon. But yeah, just put, putting those out in this picture um, uh, just in case you guys remember from the, the previous video. Um, ribosomes are the site of protein assembly from amino acids based on the uh, messenger RNA sequence. Um, I, I, I'm just realizing now something possibly confusing um, in the order of the slides is that um, most of these slides I'm about to show you guys are um, going to be about different types of membrane-bound organelles that are um, specific to eukaryotes, but ribosomes are, are not one of those membrane-bound organelles. Ribosomes are... Um, found in both eukaryotes and um, and prokaryotes uh, because because they're they're needed to um, put together the proteins using the information found in the uh, messenger RNA. So yeah, sorry sorry if any of that's confusing, but yeah, I'm going through this list of like mostly membrane bound organelles that are specific to eukaryotes, but um, ribosomes are not one of those. They're they're found in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And yeah, um, they're, they're the site of um, translation. Again, this word translation. We'll talk more about this pretty soon. But yeah, this is basically where um, proteins are assembled out of amino acids um, using the information found in the messenger RNA. But yeah, we'll talk more about that uh, later on. Uh, okay, another, another membrane-bound organelle is the um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, it's lined with ribosomes, and that's why it's called rough. That's what differentiates it from the um, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. But yeah, it's called rough because it's, it's lined with these ribosomes on the outside. And it's involved in um, protein processing, basically, including protein folding. Um, and then the smooth endoplasmic reticulum um, is a little bit similar, but it's not lined with ribosomes. That's why it's called smooth. And it's involved in um, lipid, uh, lipid synthesis and some other things too. Uh, the Golgi body, another one of these uh, membrane-bound organelles, um, yeah, it modifies and packages proteins and lipids uh, after they've gone through the endoplasmic reticulum. Again, just like processing these um, molecules. Uh, mitochondria, they're the powerhouse of the cell. Um, they generate ATP through cellular respiration, primarily through the um, Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. So yeah, they're involved in um, cellular metabolism. And one thing that's cool about them is they have their own DNA and can replicate independently um, of the cell. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so something else you guys might remember from um, high school biology is that a lot of it was about like memorizing the differences between different types of cells. So for example, I remember um, spending a lot of time like memorizing the differences between plant and animal cells. Um, so yeah, I have a little like diagram here if any of you guys want to review. Um, a couple important things, plant cells have cell walls that give them this like rigid um, structure. Um, yeah, they have like a large central central vacuole, um, chloroplasts, they're involved in, um, in photo photosynthesis. Um, they don't have centrosomes and they don't have lysosomes. Um, so yeah, just like a little bit of a, little bit of a quick review of that. Again, not super important for um, the purposes of this course, but um, might be interesting to you guys. And by the way, also, I don't, I don't wanna like minimize any, any of the importance of this stuff because um, like what I, sh what I should say is that it's not that it isn't important, it's that it, 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 it's important um, if you decide to specialize in like plant science or something. If, you're, if you become a, um, a bioinformatics researcher and you specialize in a topic that's studying plants, then of course this stuff um, probably is very important. 
But um, yeah, I, I should say that it's not that it's not important. It's that um, it's important if you decide to specialize in it. But it's not really um, part of like the general foundation that we'll need for uh, this course. Uh, and yeah, so so now I just have a couple slides on like different um, cellular processes. Um, just again, like quick review. Um, cell metabolism is converting nutrients into energy for use in cellular activities. Um, ATP is the energy currency of the cell. Um, catabolism is breaking down molecules to release energy. Anabolism is um, the opposite, using energy to build molecules. And again, this is another thing where if you decide to specialize in cell metabolism, then um, this, this stuff uh, would of course be like very important. But um, for the purposes of this course and like building like a general um, foundation, um, we're not going to be talking too much about um, cell metabolism. Uh, the same is true of the cell cycle. There's another thing I remember like memorizing all the steps of in high school. Um, again, if, if you decide to specialize in something related to like cell cycle control, um, which, which of course is like a um, important topic in cancer research, if, if you decide to specialize in something like that, then this stuff does become like very important. But um, yeah, for the purposes of this course, we won't be talking too much about the cell cycle and you guys don't need to like memorize all the steps of the cell cycle. I have it here if, if you want to review, but um, yeah, it's not, not gonna be very important for um, the purposes of this course. And yeah, um, same, same is true of mitosis, the process of um, cellular division. Another thing I, I just remember like memorizing in high school, memorizing all the different steps and what was happening at each step. Um, again, very important if you specialize in this topic, but um, not really going to be too important for um, this course. So I just put a slide if you guys want to like pause and review. Um, but yeah, not really going to be needed for the purposes of this course. And then meiosis, um, similar to mitosis in the sense that it's a process of cellular division. Um, but a difference is that meiosis is used to make gametes or sex cells, so like eggs and sperm. And in meiosis, um, because it's producing these gametes, the cells that result at the end of the division um, only have one copy of each chromosome rather than having two copies of each chromosome like, like most cells throughout the body. Um, so again, this is another thing that, yeah, like I remember like at one point in, in high school memorizing all the steps of this. Um, yeah, that, that won't be important for this course. Um, again, I, I don't mean to like minimize any of this stuff. Of course, if you decide to like specialize in a topic related to meiosis, um, then of course it becomes like very important. But for the general purposes of this course and like the general foundation we're going to try to build, um, meiosis won't be like super important to, to memorize for that. Um, okay, so that's basically all I have for you guys for this video. Um, again, this was like an optional review of some topics from high school biology. Um, in the next video, we're going to get back into some of the um, some of the like foundational biology that's going to be like more important for um, for this course. So yeah, that'll be the next video. We'll start we'll start to get back into um, more of that stuff, going deeper on this this. Uh, topic we covered in, in the previous video about like DNA, mRNA, and proteins. We're going to go deeper on like every step of that, um, of that process basically. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.